Michael Burry, the big short trader, honored by Christian Bale in the 2015 blockbuster hit, is mentioned in every item you can read this week. He is trending. We'll also cover him for this video. But first, I request that you give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We know about the 2018 housing bubble prediction, but how many of his other predictions have been reasonably accurate since then? So we decided to find out. If you've seen the Christian Bale blockbuster, you already know this. Burry realized that prices were already very high for housing, as high as they could go by adding to the pool of buyers by loosening the restrictions to sign up for these mortgages. It increases demand and demand increases without increasing supply. Subprime purchasers are the problem. They could expand to you already, selling to people who do not have any money and no credit. Who can you sell a house to next after that? So the extreme demand couldn't be supported without a way to continue to expand the market and housing prices had to fall. This is public so that others could have known, Burry said. Burry led off by saying that his short position would take time to pay off even in the event of a missed payment. It may take a year for this to appear as a write-off, highlighting that the foreclosure process is prolonged and the market will not collapse overnight. But what he pointed out was that the deterioration was already pretty substantial. The vast majority of his portfolio was short. Moody's low-quality rated subprime mortgages were issued in 2005. Many mortgages were already starting to become late or delinquent considering that these mortgages were only a year old. They had much room to get worse. Now when all the banks were telling themselves that it would not be that big of a deal if a lender defaulted on a mortgage, they would sell the house. Here's what happened in early 2006. Those banks were showing about 10 to 15 losses from offloading their possessed houses with the market. These mortgage-backed securities hit the banks hard. Burry said he wanted short water, civilizations need to function as we're seeing with this global weather pattern changes. Water access can be precious, you can't easily transport water, so some areas just might be doomed but at the same time, you also can't short water directly. Burry realized he needed to be creative to figure out how to be short. The Federal Reserve had dropped interest rates to meager rates and the federal government had given out a ton of money through stimulus packages to various institutions. But Burry believed this hadn't worked and was expecting low economic growth. He believed that the world was addicted to easy cash and that we would have to go to negative interest rates. This is chaotic and toxic environment and any minor stress on the system could crush it. It is a big concern that the leverage of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet was 77 to negative 1 and the absurdity befuddled him. He thought that after seeing all this reckless spending and cash loaning in the past subprime world, we would enter the era of personal responsibility. Still, interest rates near zero broke the social contract for general operations of hard-working Americans who save for retirement, only to find out that their savings were not nearly enough. First, it restricted small businesses' cash flow. This enormous index funds, like the S&P 500, only involved the largest 500 companies. If you were outside of these 500 companies, investments drop off. Wall Street went wild about Burry's wager, with the top comments saying that this guy's hands are made of diamonds. Michael Burry, an MD, also worked in medicine. He has a unique perspective by focusing on economics and finance. Burry said that if there was ever a time for the government to stimulate the economy, it was now. But they've been adding $3 of debt for every dollar of GDP for a long time and interest rates were already near zero. So loans to small and mid-sized businesses and fed back treasury notes were vital liquidity. He believed that countries would look to return supply chains home and that many employees would need retraining at higher cost. He was expecting that companies would go back to much more of an isolationist approach and that this would cause inflation because it's much more expensive to build a factory and pay a worker in the US than in China, Vietnam, or India. Musk vs. Burry 
Burry said the markets were facing the greatest speculative bubble of all time by two orders of magnitude. Burry tweeted that the stock market reminded him of the dot-com bubble, tweeting a picture of financialweb.com stock chart which showed the stock going from all-time highs at 28 per share to just a fraction of a few cents. This was a common sight after the crash. A couple of months later, on November 21, Jerome Powell finally said that inflation isn't transitory. It was a mistake. Since then, Burry had made some pretty serious moves. He reduced the positions in his portfolio from 22 to just 6 with CVS Lockheed Martin and Geo Group, a private prison company if you haven't heard of them, making up 90% of his open holdings. Then by the second quarter, Burry went on even further to tweet about the crypto meme spit crash and inflation during 2000, 2008, and 2022. His thesis is that all really speculative investments have crashed, suggesting we're destined for an even deeper decline. Honestly, it is a vague tweet, so it's hard to tell precisely what he means by it, which is annoying. But Burry's expectations for economic pain, at least over the next six months, make much sense. Inflation projections aren't supposed to be under 3%. So just because we've started to see inflation come back down, that doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet. Everything's going back to normal right away, but we will probably still see interest rates hikes over the next year. But it's hard to tell by how much consumer demand starts as low with this interest rates hikes. We will probably see unemployment tick up and Michael Burry's bullwhip effect is that he's talking about businesses. I expect that inflation ended up being more resilient than anybody is projecting at this point that the Federal Reserve had to go full. Paul Volcker to get inflation under control, causing a lot more economic pain than we're seeing today. But I'm curious if we're on that path at this point. So how accurate how Michael Burry's predictions been over the past 16 years? He nailed the housing market crash, but things got a little wonky. Going into this, I was a little skeptical of Michael Burry. I thought he nailed 2008, but he seemed like a little too lunatic-like for me after that. But after doing all this research and reading about him, I think much more highly of him now. You have to consider what he says through the Burry lens. Michael Burry is good at understanding fundamental economic difficulties and what could go wrong. But he also has his wild idea stacks. I've seen that when he's wrong. He backs off of these forecasts reasonably fast. So I'd recommend watching his motions after he makes a significant declaration. That's the video and thanks for watching. We'd appreciate it if you could leave a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Again, thank you for watching and see you in our next video.